I had somebody contact me through Facebook uh, that tried emailing you guys last Friday, but got Laura's out of office. Um, so they wanted to make sure you got this letter, so I printed it and gave you guys each copy this morning, but I wanted to read it. Um, she says, Dear Camp Tama County Supervisors, along with many other citizens in and around Tama County, I would like to request the installation of microphones to be added to the Board of Supervisors meeting room. While attending a meeting or watching on a live stream, it is imperative that all citizens have a fair chance to hear, without struggle, what is being talked about, discussed, and decided upon in a county meeting. As an interested and concerned citizen, I have been trying to keep up with meetings and watch them on YouTube, but my frustration level with the sound has been making my views become less and less. That is unfortunate. I know that the audience members have requested time and time again for you to install this technology I have also heard a response from the supervisors and the HR director time and time again that it is extremely costly. However, audience members have given you options to setting up a system that is simple and low cost. According to the Iowa State Association of Counties, part of the duty of a supervisor is to improve the peace, safety, health, welfare, comfort, and convenience of its residents. Hopefully, we will see a change coming in the near future for better sound for everyone. Sincerely, Jenny Bledsoe Gladbrook. I'm Janet Wilson. I reside on a farm near Cloutier. I have a follow-up question from two weeks ago. You had said the board would check with Zoning Commission members to see if they were still interested in serving. Darren Thiessen has not been attending meetings and indicated he may not in the future. Craig Sash has a turbine easement, so has an obvious conflict of interest. If you let Mr. Sash remain on the Zoning Commission, he must recuse himself for renewable energy discussions and votes. This means he is not to receive any information or participate in any way on commercial renewable energy. Other organizations often have a rule that three unexcused absences result in removal from the position. And I see that Mr. Sash has been here a few weeks and I wondered, have they contacted you or have you discussed this with them? Uh, the supervisors contacted me? Correct. Yeah, I've discussed it with them. Okay, are you gonna remain on it? I intend to, yeah. Did you sign a formal recusal on renewable well, I energy? I don't feel I should have to. Has anyone from TCAT ever talked to me and asked That's not comments? our job to have no, you do it. No, you guys you are should accusing me it. of being biased. So that's a flat okay. out lie. No, we're accusing you of having a conflict of interest, which it's is on record. Same thing. It's on record as as a conflict of interest. You you have an easement signed for turbine. I was not going to argue that. I do. Which is a conflict of interest in in planning and zoning for ordinances related to. Turbines. I don't feel that it is. Well, then these guys should let someone from TCAT join. Do you agree? Should someone from TCAT be allowed on zoning if you're allowed to stay? I would say TCAT definitely has a conflict of interest. You guys are not calling yourselves. No, you guys are not calling yourselves Tama County for better ordinances. You're clearly Tama County against turbines. You have no desire for any wind turbines. And you, so want it, you want them all stopped. I don't care if they get built or not. 
It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I got one. I'll take the money if it's in my neighborhood. Okay. I'll take one. If it doesn't get built, it doesn't get built. If it does, it does. I'm not going to lose any sleep either way overnight. Should, I can't be any Should we contact the county attorney and maybe discuss that with you on what a conflict of interest is? If would you that want be to a way call to me, it? you can, you can get my answer. number. For or how would you guys like to go forward with what a conflict of interest is? He was on that board before, on that zoning. I mean, it's not anything new. It's I was just, just I was, okay. I know, but I, what, I, what I wanted to say to you is that we need to really be respectful, and all we do is argue and fight. Mm -hmm. Everybody's confrontational. Um, Mr. Sash said he's going to stay on. That's his choice. Um, the board will decide who goes on the next zoning, the next zoning person, but don't argue and fight because that's all you guys do every week is argue and fight. Just we just need constructive help. We know that we've been doing it for how many ever weeks, but there's no reason to be um, he shouldn't have confrontational been. with him. But but it, it it doesn't matter. Why are you being confrontational with him? I mean, we're just asking. It does questions. matter. That's no, you are being does, confrational because matter. you're raising your voice, and it's just time to be adults. And we know you don't like it. We know that he's on that zoning commission. If the board wants him off, they'll ask him. To go off, but don't don't be confrontational anymore. I mean, we could sit here as adults and be nice to one another. There's no reason to be mean. But it does matter. And he it shouldn't have been matter. reappointed from, in the first place the board, what, because of the, the gender balance. But this is the board of supervisors' decision. Exactly. Let's hear from them. Yeah. Exactly. That was their choice. Yes, He's sir. on there. Any feedback? I mean, I don't think we really talked about it. I mean, no. I mean, we haven't really discussed it, but I think Brady wants to stay on. I think. Have you talked to Darren? Yeah, I have. Does he want to stay on? I don't know. He was. I told him, if you want to stay on, that's fine. If you don't want to, send a letter of resignation in. And I don't think he's gotten one, has he? No. And I Not told him about two or three weeks ago. Yeah, I haven't seen anything. So Any? there may be two positions that we need to how, do, how do you feel about unexcused absences? If they repeatedly don't come to meetings. You mean, are, what, what are you the, the board members who are currently on, if they miss more than three consecutive meetings, do you think they should be removed from their position like other counties do? I don't know what, are you, are you asking about the meetings that our attorney asked them not to have? Is that what you're asking about? Any, any zoning meetings. Any zoning meetings. Or any board of adjustment meetings or any other, any so other board. It was still an official meeting whether the attorney asked for them not to do it or not. But it was an official meeting. It was an official meeting. It was not an official meeting because two, two of the people came in way and Brenda came in. It was an official. Yeah, just the last one, the first ones they did have. Darren came to those and called in. Yeah. Correct. So as far as Darren goes, I don't know. I talked to him, I said, two or three weeks ago, what do you need to get back with us? Um, also, there seems to be problems with email for Tim County. It's well documented that government business should not take place on personal email, but the supervisors do not have county or government email addresses, only personal emails. Would Tim County be able to secure government emails for all county employees and appointees? This week we did have um, folks contact us because they had attempted to send their thoughts to the auditor for the live streaming the Board of Supervisors meeting, and also we had um, another person try to send solar comments in and got the message that Laura was out of the office until March 20th. Oh, can I interrupt there? It yes. is on there that they can contact our office, though, so they could contact us, call in, and we could tell them that we can check the emails, and we'd let them know that we would be checking. Is those. there just some way it could say it on there? It does. If she's got an out of office. Well, it said to call you. Could right? it just say, this will be monitored by somebody and business will I be taken I can't tell you what... Laura puts on there. That's what Laura puts. That's yeah. all I can say. It was Laura's decision to even put that on there. She's just letting everybody know that she's out of the office, but you can contact the office with, and she left a phone number that they can call us and we can tell them. In the ad, does it specify it's mail again? It can be mailed or emailed. Okay. And then on the website, um, the auditor's page has voters at tamacounty.org, and that's one that, that Ms. Bledsoe emailed that just said Laura was out of the office. It didn't say, you know, this is a group monitored email. It didn't say somebody gets. So she was 
concerned you wouldn't get the email um, that you sent last Friday. Well, yeah, and the same thing for the person who wanted to make sure their um, comments on solar got there. So it's very unfortunate that the deadline was set for March 17th when she's out of the office all week long. So whether it's intentional or she just checks her email. email. She checks her email okay. all the time. We check her email too, And so. they check her email, so that's not true. But I'm just saying the public doesn't know that. Well, Tammy, when you send you it in still... and it says they're gone, Right. Every, I didn't know she was going to be gone either. But even but if she's gone, matter. the, dead, the deadline's Friday. So yeah, so you still she's just send right. it in, and it, it, we get them. When you send it in is when you find out she's not here. We still get those emails. Those emails don't disappear. And we do check them during the week while she's gone because we feel oh. that we need to. So we do. Just other people had told us they were worried about it because it didn't say you would check them during the They'll week. They'll be checked. So. Thank you. Well, and also the lady had emailed earlier on Friday, and Karen didn't know that, that the letter was there. Just because so. I hadn't checked her email yet today because I haven't had time. Right. It was, I just got here at 8 today. Okay. Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's... It still works. It works. Right. It works. So that's maybe it's just a wording it. issue on the out-of-office. And it, I'm sure if Laura had thought about it, she'd have done it, knowing that it was going to be an issue, but she's not here, so... I can't say for her. So, uh, so Thursday you guys had a closed session. I know you probably can't talk about that. Was that with Brent Heron then? So, and it was zoning and solar that you were discussing? Solar. Is that, my understanding, shouldn't that be a Brent? Topic, not Carlton. Carlton's our HR uh, insurance risk pool. Like, why would you not first go to Brent? Our, we're paying tax, our taxes go to Brent. Why would you not ask Brent or invite him to these meetings when that's what his job is instead of us taxpayers paying for Carlton? Is that discussed? Or I know there was maybe bad blood in the past that you guys don't ask, but other counties, Brent sits. Uh, the Brent in those counties sits in the meetings at every supervisor meeting. He could answer those questions like, hey, it is the law. You have to fill the position and you have to fill it with gender balance. Is that something you guys are discussing to start talking to Brent? We probably have to for Carlton because Carlton's been with us this whole period of time. Okay. Well, Brent has two, Dan. We voted him in. He hasn't been part of our. He hasn't been part of the negotiations or about the negotiations with Brent. Then he's not helped us at all. He's How long has Carlton been with you, Dan? Oh gosh, 20, 20 some years. Yeah, it's just amazing when we're paying him. Like I said, Brent could answer these questions. He could help out. He could help lead this. So I guess. What can you tell the public? What is the next steps? Are you going to fill zoning position or not? Are you going to let the current members meet? You know, if you don't want to meet on wind, can they meet on solar? You know, pipelines, everything else. What's what's next steps that you can you can tell us for where we go from here to get zoning working? You want to answer that, Bill? We are in the process of trying to get something set up for your solar. What do you mean by something set up, I guess? That's as far as I'm going to go with it right now. Okay. Um, and this, what's due by the 17th, what will you do? So you'll get all this information back. Then, I guess, what's next steps on that? Is that just to say, like, yep, the public agrees that, you know, solar ordinances need to be updated for industrial, and then, you know, you take action, the zoning, or is that something you can discuss? We're taking everything and reading it. I'm reading everything I get. And then we'll discuss it as a board and go from there. Okay. Sounds good. No, we'll send you guys letters and emails. And I think it's uh, the time is now to do that moratorium before Ted Renewables or somebody else comes in here. It's going to put you guys in a lot harder position. So um, the sooner you can get that on the agenda to get the, the moratorium in place for industrial solar, I think. 
it sounds like everybody is fairly like aligned and wants it, or at least let's update it because we don't have it today. So just appreciate you guys continuing to look at that and taking those steps. So thank you for that. If you know of anyone that has any comments, be sure to have them mail them to us. Or, yep. Or emailed to us. Yep. Or, or get them to the auditor. Yeah. Any anyway. auditor. Because so, we want everybody to hear. Yeah, it's good to get, get everyone. We come in and get mail every, I get it on Wednesday, Kurt on Thursday, and Dan on Friday. Yep. And we set it on each other's desks. Okay. The gentleman back here. I'd like to present you guys with some suggestions that we have right now. And the last question, um, when do you guys think you can get your emails and phone numbers out online or um, have you been getting very many, very many phone calls or how's that going, I guess, on getting your information out there so the public can actually email and call and ask questions and like for this situation too. I think they were out there. I think mine's on, mine's on there. No, mine's out there. Is it out there now? Yeah. Well, yeah. Is, is they they aren't they they all the, I think they're all on They're there. not on the board. Board page. Is well, it on the board of supervisors? I'm thinking yours might be Kurt. They were not yesterday. Kurt's is moving. I thought I saw his on. While she's looking that up, um, Dan, a couple weeks ago you had held up a piece of paper that said we have a solar ordinance. I didn't know if you were referring to the one that's for residential in our. Okay. And do, I didn't know if you felt that that covered industrial. No, and, okay. Because no, right. when I read through it, I didn't get that sense at all. I felt like it was only for residential. So I just want to make sure that's what you're referring to and I wasn't missing something. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't see it underneath. It just says there's your like name and fax your, number, right? your role is all that I see. There's a generic number, but there's no emails or phone numbers. There's, there's a cell number set up. No. No, they're not on there. Some reason on my phone. Nope. Well, he could call and leave Right. It'd just be good to, to get that. That is their number. That is uh, 3980. The generic That's direct one? line. It's not generic. It comes directly into here to their phones. You can leave a message on it. That is their number. Say, and when they're not here, it brings into our office and we pick it up yep. and we can put it right. in the Right. Just yep. most counties, they have. They have government email addresses and they have their phone numbers and they allow the public to call with questions or email. Anytime they want to leave a message here. And I know a bunch of you have my cell number. You can be sure to call me any, anytime you want. Okay. What's the reason for the sign up sheets? At least for the come around the business. What's the reason for that? I would why did you decide to I think, do that here? I think Laura just likes to know how many numbers are here is why she sends it around and sometimes it is helpful that we can figure out who's talking and put your name down in the notes then too. Because not everybody here seems to sign up. I don't know about that. I'm busy taking notes so I don't know about that. <laughs> well, there's a couple over here that have signed up I don't believe. We'd appreciate it if you would put your name down. That'd be great. Thank you. Craig, I got a question for you. Yeah. When would have been the last zoning meeting Prior to the ones the attorney advised us not to go to, I couldn't tell you what it was for a uh, variance on uh, sectioning off a parcel, I believe. I can't um, tell you the date or. Craig, I did reach out to you. Yes. And um, I guess my question for you is yes, we are Tama County against industrial, turbines, and solar. Every dime we have raised has been a donation from the county, outside of the county, the state, outside of the state, and even some outside of the country. Now, you 
have an easement, you're on the zoning board, right? And you're taking money. Is that correct? Well, you get, well, if you're getting paid more to get a turban erected, yes. So how do you feel you can be unbiased? I'm not the only one getting money from the turbans, others. On the zoning? Well, on the zoning, yes. Okay, so you're in an appointed position. How do you feel we could get an unbiased? If you feel we couldn't give an unbiased position, how would you expect us to think you would? I stated my position on it here. And what is that? I <clears throat> nowhere. You're, you're, you're what? I'm completely neutral on these things. I don't care if they get built or don't get built. Yeah, I signed an easement. Yeah, I'll have a turbine. All my neighbors sign an easement are getting turbines. If I'm around them, I got to look at them. I just won't take the payment. <laughs> We're not. But you guys can say no all you want. It ain't your ground. I'm sorry. That's how. Hey, that's your business. What I, you do on your ground? Yes. The problem comes in. This county needs yeah. updated ordinances. Well, I'm not going to argue that we should. Do you look agree with that? Ordinances. I'm, I'm not going to argue that we shouldn't look at the ordinances. Look at them or update them. I, They're well, obsolete. Number two thing, we've had zoning members meet, and apparently they met when you didn't come. So were they told not about to show the up? Public hearings, I believe. A couple Here's meetings. Here's the thing. Doug Doug Hoffman, Doug Hoffman, Doug Hoffman, Doug So your Craig, your stance is you don't care if they get built or not. If the whole project falls apart, it's no skin off my back. If they get built, same thing. I I can't make myself any more neutral than I am. I was gonna say early on, Bill up there had a sign easement for a good neighbor project. He got that basically erased to make sure he could be fair and open and honest and uh, make an unbiased decision sitting on the board. And basically we're saying the same thing to you. You have a signed easement. Are you willing to then say to the public, I'm going to recuse myself if there's anything comes up concerning when I have no intention of refusing myself. And you don't see any chance that you're in a conflict of interest? No, I do not. We have a difference of opinion. And that's fine. That's okay. For America, we can have that, right? Yep. Right. I understand. So, but just so we understand each other. No, you know, that's so fine. I was just pointing out the fact of what uh, Bill did. Uh, well, Bill does is his business. I can't. I mean, he's, he's an adult, too, so. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, we understand Todd Apfel resigned from his position. Um, when is his last day? He did not resign. He did not resign. He'll be done June 30th. He'll be retiring in June. Yeah. We understand he submitted a resignation. That no, he did not. Did verbal. Yeah. Verbal. Yeah. He, he rescinded it or whatever you call it. Yeah. Did anybody uh, think to accept it? I was shocked that he did it. Oh no! <laughs> when he called, I didn't know he left mad. So um, when he said it, it was like so. No, I didn't just probably because I was fighting. So I'm I'm curious when somebody said 
they want to resign, why do we take them back? Because obviously that shows their heart's not in the job. They want out. And usually when you have that, they're just here to take the, to take the check and put in their time. So why was his resignation, if it was verbal, not accepted? I don't know that he ever verbally even told me he was resigning. <coughs> did he tell you, Kurt? So it was on the, yeah, he did tell me. Okay. <coughs> Yes, it would go with the rat land, just like any other easement. Okay. If I were to sell my farm, the easement would go with the farm. Okay. I just wanted to see if you were on board with that. Thank you, Craig. So, do you still feel you can be unbiased and can't discuss the terms of the contract? I'm not going to discuss the terms of the contract I got on my hog building either. I mean. That's a private matter between that's me and a, another company. That's a private matter, correct. The same with the turbine. No, it isn't. Yeah, yes, it definitely is. Then why does it go through the county and why does it go through zoning? If it's a private matter. That's just for the why is it being site. Why is it being discussed here? The matters of the contract are not being discussed. The, the payment for the contract or the length of the term or any other parts of the contract are not being discussed. My contract yes, online we, for contract yes, we can. Yeah. Well, I guess it is. Not that I care about it, but you can see it. This is not We're aware of all the lenders that have signed the with the, the easement owners. It's public knowledge, public record. Craig, do you know anything about the easement that you
gender on the zoning board, we're going to try to, yes. So you're going to try to follow state requirements? Yes. Okay. Are you going to open it back up or use the candidates you already have? or? Uh, when we get ready to do anything with zoning, we'll open it back up, yes. Um, after what you guys discussed the last couple of weeks, I, I was kind of hoping you'd have a vote for moratorium on solar on today's agenda, but it's not there. Is that something you might be adding to an agenda soon, uh, since you can do a moratorium without the zoning board recommendation yourselves? I know, I know the update to the ordinance has to go through them and all the public hearings, but I, Heather, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, the moratorium they, can be done through the board of supervisors yeah, they without have the zoning. Board. Last week's March 6th and March 9th special. March 9th. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of uh, March 6th and March 9th. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Lyle. <clears throat> Morning. Um, yeah, a few things. Uh, one is uh, PCI, we haven't talked with them lately, but uh, they are still uh, scheduled to start on April 3rd on the parade on Business 3rd. Um, but uh, we haven't heard confirmation of moving in just yet. I expect them to give us a few days notice at least, maybe a week's notice. And so right now I would anticipate April 3rd is when the, the bridge on Business 3rd over here Creek will be uh, closed. We've also got a contract with PCI to replace a bridge on K Avenue. And this is down on the south end of the county, just north of the county line by Dorothy Bosch. And um, right now it's closed because there's been a, a suck hole under the back wall. There's a scour there that, that's sucking dirt from behind the back wall. That can be an extremely dangerous thing. Um, uh, it's my belief that more often than not, when you hear that there's flooding and the bridge washed out and somebody was killed, what you'll find out is it actually wasn't that the bridge was washed out, but the dirt behind the bridge was washed out. Someone comes through driving along, they fall into the hole, and bridge doesn't move. So that can be an extremely dangerous situation. The bridge is closed right now. Uh, again, it's under contract already. It's already designed. The bids have been taken. PCI's got the contract. They're probably not going to come in until July, June, late June, early July. So um, we're going to try to knock the hole down. We're going to have to keep monitoring it. We'll try to get it open between now and then is what I'm trying to say, but it's going to need to be monitored. Uh, we had to go out on some snow uh, yesterday and the, on Thursday of last week. Work on the shop is still going slow, being affected by wind. Shed B was intended to start today. Uh, we've got a crew coming down to send a contract. I haven't heard if they've actually made that. They haven't started work anyway this morning. There's some people there, but I don't think they've actually started doing anything. Um, we're hauling rock and blading roads yet. Uh, still some potential for rain and turning into snow later in the week. We have last week tentatively scheduled to start uh, contract hauling tomorrow. The snow forecast kind of moved that up, so we don't have that lined up yet. We'll probably, what we're gonna do is tentatively schedule for next week, and we can, that'll give us time that we can reach out to the haulers, let them know that we're gonna be doing it. If we have to cancel, we still have time to cancel it. So we gotta come up with a plan. And uh, last thing is the bridge crew, we're gonna, uh, they're hauling rock right now, and they've been hauling rock for a while. When we get them to, to go work on bridges, we've got a bridge up, um, West of Garland, that we're going to go work on. Anything else? Do you have no. any input on the Otter Creek project at all? Is that all, all being our yes, Otter Creek Lake? Okay. Oh, you're talking about the park? Yeah. No, I, I don't have any. Okay, I'm going to be done. Uh, no, conservation. Conservation. Okay. Yeah, you'll have to call the DNR just county conservation. Yeah. Sure. Well, first off, thank you, Lyle and Craig Cash, for coming here. We, we thank the supervisors all the time for answering their questions and, and putting up with us every week as we put up with them, but thank you both gentlemen for coming. Lyle, is there anything different this year that there is so much garbage along the roads? And I mean all the roads. I mean, it's, I, all my life I've lived here, I've never seen so much trash dumped. What's going on? What's different? Is it something different about the landfill or pickups or time? Uh, 
I'm not aware of anything different at the landfill. I'm not aware of... What is going on? And so much. Yeah. The variety, even cans and bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Society. Yeah. It's absolutely simple. Yeah. What? Society. I don't know. I know that the um, um, there may be some improvement maybe on cans and bottles. As I recall, the legislature last year approved something that it they didn't increase how much money you're gonna. It's still a five cent deposit on your on your can or the ten cents on your bottle, but um, they've increased how much money the redemption centers get when they turn that can over. That makes the redemption centers a little bit more viable. Uh, it, there, there hasn't been a lot of money in it for redemption centers. And I don't know about you guys, I have a heck of a time finding a redemption center anymore. That's open. What's that? That's, That's open. open. Right, right. But they went from one cent. The way that works is, somebody explained to me one time, you've got the, the bottler that makes a can. Basically, they create a five cent token and they sell that to the to the distributor. The distributor takes that can and sells it to the grocery store. They, they charge an extra five cents for it. When you go and buy the can, they sell the, another five cents that you pay the grocer. When you turn it back to, to the uh, redemption center, they, they get five cents. You pay them five cents or vice versa, I guess. When the redemption center takes that back to the bottler, they get eight cents now. So there's, there's three cents that they can make extra on that. It used to be just a penny. Or I couldn't find the redemption center at all. <coughs> I did forget, I do have a utility permit. Uh, it's okay. from Alliant. It's up uh, uh, the northwest, up around the Gladbrook area. Okay. And it's, uh, they are, uh, oh, sorry, they are going to be placing some lines, mostly on private property, but there's a few places where they're crossing the road. Okay. None of this is in our right of way, except for where it crosses the road, square the road. <coughs> I think there's still some frost left in the field. Is that a fair statement? Well, there's not much. Yeah. A little bit, not a lot. I think I've heard it in some places. Yeah, there ain't much. Yeah. <laughs> the, spongy. The roads, you you push the, the, the snow acts as an insulation for the for stopping from freezing deep. The roads would pile the snow off the frost and go away. But there is definitely. Yes. Sure. 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 Right. Fall, not going to be for farm I know the road was soft coming into, you know, after doing the work, the road was soft. And uh, I do. Really, that's one that does need, it still needs. To be babied a little bit to get until it starts getting more better. Yeah. Okay. Like that farm road oh, yeah, the operator knows about that. Oh, Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank one thing I didn't do was put vacation on there, and uh, we had a cap of eighty, and we wanted to um, take that cap off and just add vacation, also that you can donate because that way we won't. anybody to know, donate it to so we just want to add the vacation to that mm. remember all we had was sick leave mm. we just mm -hmm. want to add vacation to it 
and then take it from 80 hours, just let them donate what they want. So if they have like 50 hours of vacation, or excuse me, of sick leave, or 120 they want to donate, then we'll put that in there. Too. Oh, that's great. Right, right. I think so too. We just didn't realize that we had it limited until we were just looking at it this past week, and I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. I didn't realize. You don't think of it till after you already do it, and then you're like, oh, maybe not. So it's okay if you guys will strike the eighty hours, strike the eighty hours out, and then add vacation. Sounds great. We need a motion for that. Yep. We need to yeah. motion for that. Yep. I'll make a motion. That's a good idea. Can you do the changing to the sick leave? Yeah. Really? I second it. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, uh, change the catastrophic sick leave, remove the eight hours, and add vacation. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Any other got thing? It. You guys got the stroke screening, got that set up. We'll be doing benefits yeah. day in June also. And then don't forget this Friday, and hopefully, weather permitting, right? <laughs> no snow gonna be cold it's gonna be rainy it's gonna be okay though I promise I know but we already June. got everything over there Ugh, sorry some big St. Patrick's okay. party Friday no no uh, just employee appreciation day so yeah. on St. Patrick's Day. I say well we were supposed to have it this past week but we were afraid that the guys were gonna be snow or excuse me uh, moving snow and didn't want them to miss out, so we moved it to this week. And then, of course, it would appear there might be snow again yeah. on Thursday yeah. for like the fifth Thursday in a row. I don't know. So we'll move it to June, right? <laughs> so maybe. I hope not. I hope we get it. We'll see. This Friday. Thank you. Okay. Okay, claims. I have a motion to approve claims. I'll make that motion. I'll second. It's been moved in a second to approve claims. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. There is a motor. Okay, so that rocks. Okay, got it? Yep. Mm. Thanks, Before we leave, um, I just wanted to tell you something I forgot to tell you. Um, I'll be closing out insurance with Heartland Insurance Risk Pool um, probably within the next week or so. So um, right now I'm just making sure that everything's been paid up to date and then um, getting that money, the rest of that money um, back. So the main building, the big shop actually uh, comes back at 640 some thousand, which was a hundred like 101,000 more than we had anticipated due to costs of lumber. So we'll see. When I get it all done, I'll give you guys a okay. printout of what's left and what they're gonna pay to us. And then we'll have to carry that from this fiscal year if we don't have everything repaired, which we should be almost done. And, but we might have to carry a little into next fiscal year. That's okay, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Deb. Sorry, okay. I forgot about that. Thank you. Okay, next, discuss live streaming and zooming of board meetings. And my Yeah, I got some information the other time about the pre now meetings, but um, it can be as cheap as you want it. It can be a thousand bucks, it can get you a pretty nice system. Um, I don't know, I've had, I just, I've had a lot of complaints and a lot of hurt a lot of people, so. Why I made that motion to talk about it and see what we can get done. So it's pretty simple. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there you can go just to do something like that and get Michael phones for back there. But there's also a system where it's just one little thing in the ceiling. And anyway, I'm not an IT guy, so I don't know anything else. But um, I personally wouldn't be afraid of doing something like that. Tammy, do you think uh, our IT people should look at this and look into that? I think Rick already looked at all of that, and then um, uh, the conversation I had with uh, Carlton was that um, 
that we need to make sure we have a good professional system because he's afraid that if we um, are doing anything like Zoom or anything like that, that people would um, come in to the middle of our meetings because we'd make it public instead of just allowing people in. That was his concern about doing, because we had talked about just starting to do Zoom and then um, for now, and um, he, he really said to be very careful about that, but then he said you probably are gonna have to get a, some kind of professional system because you're gonna have to have somebody um, monitoring it and taking care of it because you already have, we have everybody here, but then someone would have to sit here and do that, so. I think that's what that thousand that thousand dollar one is a, is definitely a professional one. So yeah, I don't I I don't, I don't think know. you're going to spend two three thousand dollars on something, you know. But well, but if you're putting in speakers and microphones and all that, you know, and it's connected. That, it's just that one owl. It, it has a range of eight foot around the deal. Um, I wrote it down. I think for any hundred. Panoramic uh, 360 camera, um, 10 foot all the way around it, and then it's 18 foot audio, which so should be fine. I, 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 I would think uh, it'd be fine in here. I think yeah. you do it right there. Yeah. yeah. But I don't. I don't. I. So it's gonna be set up so the public, if they're out in their tractor or whatever, they can chime in. Right. That and I don't know. I don't. So how do you regulate all that? If somebody. I, go you gotta have somebody doing, doing it. There'll have yeah, to be that. somebody here doing yeah, it. For somebody's sure. gonna be mad if they don't get to talk. So yeah. You be careful. I, I don't know. Um, it, it's not. If a, you if you send that, just email it to me and I'll ask Rick about it. Um, Rick Watt. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it can be a. Uh, I don't think it's as easy you know, as you think it is, though, because if you're going to record them, you're going to have to keep them forever, and that's why we talked about we needed a server because um, once you make those, once you're doing that, you need to save that file like forever, just like the board minutes. So you're going to have to have a server. Um, I don't think we have anything to. I mean, I know we could put it on what we have right now, but eventually you're going to need your own server for that. I think yeah, that. Yeah, you can email it through the minutes. Yeah. It almost seems like. Well, I mean, when you make it, when when you tape that, then that's what you what have to do. Yeah. Um, I know, obviously, Benton, I mean, we all know Benton County does it, but I'm under the assumption that there are quite a few other counties do it, so it's possible. I mean, it's possible. I would say maybe, I don't know, maybe. 25 counties in the state do it. I don't know. It's not a whole lot. Um, it's up to you guys. I'll ask, but I will ask Rick if you send it to me. I'll ask Rick and see what he says. But again, you're going to have to have someone monitoring it and starting it, stopping it, making sure people are getting in to talk. And then when you, and the other issue that I see happening with that is if you only have a half hour everybody's going to be mad because they're not going to be able to get in and say they're two cents worth because you have people coming from everywhere. Well, I honestly, I don't think Benton County's, I don't think they can talk back in. No. no. Oh, so, but why would you want it then if you guys can't say anything? I mean, you're... You know what's going on. No, I mean, but you say you want to... No, what I'm saying is you, if it's... Yeah, you could video it. That, that's not an issue, but I thought you guys wanted to talk... I guess I was that, that was the page I was on. I yeah. I know. I just like thought a, that I just thought that like a live would, stream. Yeah, because yeah, I, I was thinking that people are gonna be. Can, yeah, that was my concern. Like a nice stuff. Talk. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say there's no way we can really. Yeah. Well, live streams live streams different than a than an open meeting back and forth. So. Right. It just be so but people... if it's an open meeting, do we have to? If we do that, do we have to make it? No, no, no. no. I mean, no. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I don't know. I just want to make sure we don't get in trouble 
So if we make it an open meeting and we are uh, live streaming, I mean, whichever way you guys want to go is fine, but. Well, we already are an open meeting and if somebody hears something that they'd like to respond to, they can be like Craig and show up next week. That's right, yeah. Like, it, like Carolyn said, it's the way churches do it. They want to find out a little bit more, they can come to the church service the following week. We can. You could do that. Going on. I, I think we could do that. Yeah. I, I don't think that's a microphone issue. thing, too. I mean, I just, I don't know if anybody's talking back there, but that's that's cheap crap, too. I mean, well, if we're just going to do <coughs> just video it and put it out there, then that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. That should be a pretty easy thing to do. Live think. would be good to actually watch it, not talk, but watch it live, too. That's right. Because cool. you don't want it three months or, you know, one month away. You want it to be. Watch it, but can't speak. That should be that hard either, though. No, and to allow people in. I mean, that's something easy. I don't care. And there's somebody or an IT person. If someone could just be there to allow people in, if that's that's pretty easy to do. Do we have money left over in the CARES Act? Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm assuming for that we probably do. Cause I, but I have not been in the care. I we're or, working on the CARES Act this week, or trying to make sure. Or we, another program that we. Yeah. 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 I think we have. I'm sure. I'm sure I probably have enough money for my broadband area that that well, wouldn't Dana, be an issue. Going, to, going to that, um, we're talking roughly a, you know, thousand bucks for good system. We spent seven hundred bucks from FCTC to put that in our barn for our cows. Richard a while back had noticed that there was a discrepancy in the audit that. Two employees um, spent in the neighborhood of sixteen thousand dollars and was charged a thousand dollars in sales tax. Were those employees ever reprimanded? Because right there's the money for that camera. That that, that was addressed with those people. Okay. Were they written up? Were they reprimanded? Um, when you're talking department heads or elected officials, we. Um, it's a little bit different. They're the ones held liable. Um, if their employees did it, then that's their responsibility to take care of that with their employees. 